Welcome back to my carpet. Now tonight's review is an oldie but goodie. This is a figure from around 20 years ago, around about 1999. This is Mezco Toys, Silent Screamers, Real Masters, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So here is Dr. Jekyll. Here is Dr. Jekyll's lab. And here is Mr. Hyde. Now Dr. Jekyll fits inside Mr. Hyde. Now these were the first toys released by Mezco. And this was series two of Silent Screamers. Series one was released under another company name, which was Aztec Toys. Now they were the company that would become Mezco, along with the design studio Art Asylum. Um, and when they were all one big happy family, they called themselves Aztec Toys. They released series one of these, and then Art Asylum left the partnership, and the remaining company was called Mezco, and series two came out under that name. So history lesson over. Um, now, bad points are, series one of these figures were far superior. They were better sculpted, they were better made, they were better looking uh, in every way. Uh, the, the second series was a real drop in uh, quality, it has to be said. Um, you really noticed that the sculpting team had left. Now, Mezco has gone on, as we know, to become one of the foremost producers of collectible figures today. And they're amazing. Um, but this was the start of that company. And it has to be said, Mr Hyde is pretty terrible. Now, I'll start with Mr Hyde. Mr Hyde is just a hollow figure. Um, his left foot seems to be on the right side of his body. Uh, he comes apart. He splits down the middle so you can put Dr. Jekyll inside. But he's very, very plasticky. He's not very well sculpted. He's poseable at the shoulders and the wrists and the head. And he's just terrible. I mean, Mr. Hyde ought to have a stick, a cane, a top hat, a suit, um... He just looks like a sort of shapeless blob with a face. Um, he's not great. Sorry, but he's not. Now, Dr. Jekyll is a strange one. Um, he doesn't move very much. He's got a... Now, this is where you really notice the difference in the sculpting between Series 1 and 2. Series 1, the faces were very stylized but very detailed very angular quite scary um used very matte paint and series two is really noticeable in a different style of sculpting much more rounded much glossier painting much more cartoonish style of the sculpting and they really um they really were a drop from the first series um but it's still a good figure. It's just compared to the Series 1, you really notice a difference in quality. Now, he's just posable at the shoulders. He has swivels at the elbows and, and uh, a neck. That's it. But he's very, very awkward. His head's at a funny angle. His hands are in a very strange position. All you can do is twist the arm round at the elbow, and it's very odd because... He's got a smiley face, but his arms are contorted in pain. So there's no real way to pose him where he doesn't look stupid. And also, you know, I'm thinking this is supposed to be a Victorian gentleman. So why is he wearing Regency stockings and shoes? Um, yes. Anyway, forget the historical inaccuracies. Um... Dr. Jekyll is about seven inches tall and he fits inside Mr. Hyde. So the rest of the playset is rather splendid. And um, considering the price point of this figure, 
Now that wall at the back is just a piece of cardboard, so we'll forget about that. Um, it comes with a piece of floor and a table, which is like no table in the history of the universe ever. Um, painted to look like a metal table, but it's an L shape with an odd number of legs. And it looks more like a shop counter than a lab table. This is like um, no Victorian table ever. Just a wooden table would have been better. You know, oblong with four legs. A table. Um, but you get a lot of lab equipment. You get all this. You get a test tube holder with test tubes. A syringe. Um, various uh, boiling flasks. A... Um, stand, a quadruped stand, uh, a candle underneath, presumably you couldn't afford a Bunsen burner, um, and it's rather spiffing, the uh, the equipment's rather nice on it, I think, um, better than Mr Hyde, that's for sure. Now, if you turn it round, whoops, all the stuff falls off, if you turn it round, on the back, there is a brick wall, and a path with a drain and blood. So you're supposed to stand Mr Hyde on this bit when he's not uh, got Dr Jekyll inside him. And Dr Jekyll on this. So you can't actually display it all together because some of it would be behind. Now he also comes with two books, which are very nice actually. They don't open, but it's just scenery, so... So there you go. Um, there was other figures in this series. One was a version of Frankenstein from a Thomas Edison film. And the other was the robot from Metropolis, which is always, always, always called Maria, but is not called Maria in the film. If any of you two toy producers have ever actually bothered watching it, the woman the leader of the rebellion is Maria. The robot has another name, which I can't remember offhand, but it definitely isn't Maria. Anyway, soapbox over. Um, compared to um, Dr Caligari from series one, these are a real drop in sculpting and quality. Um, series one were amazing. And uh, but these are still worth getting. I mean, they're fun, they're mind bogglingly cheap. Um, but that's like no version of Mr. Hyde ever. Mr. Hyde was just a bad version of him. Um, you know, not a, a huge monster in a raincoat, that's for sure. So, thank you for um, enduring another one of my videos. I hope it's been informative. Um, any questions, comments, uh, please leave them. So keep safe and take care.